over the years, I own masters now. I sign artists to me. I do deals, you know, partnership deals. I'm not signed to a label. I have a partnership with this label, and this label got a partnership with this one. And to understand that, a lawyer can only tell you so much. And I remember yeah. years ago, I signed something after the lawyer told me part of it, and it was not good. So once yeah. I got out of that, I realized that no matter about I may not know everything, but I want to know enough to know what I'm signing moving forward and how to manage this new new music uh, industry that is becoming. New. for some people to come in ah. Tell people to subscribe. you know please please subscribe and subscribe to our youtube channel that's Thank really you know, I tell you yeah i'm waiting for a few more people to come in though we post and, all uh, of our uh carfitable talks videos there along with a number of other videos too so to yeah uh, oh we've got Vashon coming on already how cool is that hello everybody it's good to see you Hi, uh, Jazzy Creative, Van Brown, how are you doing? Richard Nichols, Cherry, Cherry. Hey! Hello. How are you doing? Oh, I'm liking this look, darling. Uh-oh, uh-oh. How are you doing? I'm great yourself. Great, great. I love the hair. Like this, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a little color to it. Yeah. <laughs> Why not, huh? Well, we've got a lot to talk about, my dear. Oh. And, uh, oh, yes. And I've, I want to start off just saying a few things about you. I, I wrote a few, and then I just wanted to say some things from the heart. Jeez. And I got to tell you, I got a Vicky's going to get messy on you, too. But, uh oh. Uh oh. But, but um, Atlanta based Bashan Mitchell sang one of the greatest songs of all time, one of our new and recent. Um, anthems nobody greater he is a dove grammy and stellar award nominee many people call him the connector but i call him the glue uh -huh. i think that Bashan is it came right at a, a place where um he's not one of the new new kids but he's kind of that glue that puts gospel all together i'm so happy to have him on he's super intelligent uh i think he's the future of gospel in terms of business and that behind the scenes guy that kind of like claude and i that are going to be there to uh help steer people you know him as a producer a writer an incredible artist everybody please Amen. let's welcome Bashan Bashan Whoa! Whoa! Hey, how are you doing? I am great. I, I love that introduction, oh, and I mean uh, from the heart, I really did mean yeah, it. I appreciate it so much, and uh, just great to be here. Like I told you before, a few times, you know, watching some some of your carpetable talks, and they've been great. You know, some of my my leaders have been on there, like Bishop Morton and all of them. So I said, okay, it's my turn now. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Donald Lawrence and folks like that. Yeah, I think it's yeah. really important historically that we have you on because I think when history is done through this period, I think you'll be one of those people, like I said, the glue that kind of puts um, connect the two generations together, I think, really. Wow. Wow. And um, I think that's incredible. And I think you're only just beginning, especially after I chatted with you a little bit more uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but Sean, people love us talking about, uh, you know, current topics. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna get into all your other history. But one of the things we want to know is what is the man, but Sean Mitchell thinking? So you know, we just Ooh. had an election, and that was crazy. And I know you're from Atlanta, but you come into California quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but there is a big topic looming right now, and honey. That has to do with Kanye West taking up all the gospel charts. Gospel yeah. and Christian. <laughs> okay. We want your opinion on it, darling. What do you think about all this? You know what? I'm going to have two opinions. My first one is okay. that I think Donald Lawrence said it best, and he wrote it a, a, such a great commentary. He said that once you put a dolphin in a pond, they're bound to take over the pond. So basically, mm. gospel is, you know, 
they have its only consumers are only so many and things that sort. But then you bring a hip hop artist that is huge, uh, hip hop rap artist as huge as Kanye into that into that gospel bucket. Yeah. He's bound to the consumption is bound to take over. I think the the conversation is not about what we think about it and going onto Instagram and putting up charts, whatever, thinking that's going to solve something. I think the conversation opens up to, uh, you know, who's guarding the genre, how do we protect the genre and what is it really gospel? And if it is, then how do we catch up to where Kanye is? You know, it's, it's not really, uh, you know, what we've made it about. So I don't, you know, I, I don't post a lot of comments. I don't say a lot of things, but I do believe that uh, as a genre though, we, we're losing our genre if we don't know what it is and, and come together to defend what it is, you know, and just say that, is this gospel or not? Or, or if say for instance, you know, half of your catalog is not gospel, then you can't be in gospel. Like there's no one making those decisions anymore. And uh, I believe that we, you know, when I was coming up, there was some, uh, and I, I don't call them gatekeepers or nothing like that. I just, there was some gospel guards who guarded the sound of gospel, no matter if it was hip hop, no matter if it was rap, no matter if it was, praise and worship or contemporary it all had a guard to it to say that this is gospel so uh, you know that's my thoughts on it i think that kanye as long as his heart is right and he's doing what god has called him to do continue to do it because he's reaching the ear that a lot of us can't reach our, our right. conversation should be how do we get there and how do we come up to the charts if, if that's what it's about but it's not about charts to me so i have a have a, a strong it conversation uh it's about continuing you know being who god has called me to be you know I didn't, I didn't have a chart when God called me. You know, he allowed me to get on the chart. You know, I, I, I had an assignment. So continuing my assignment, he would continue to open doors. And if we continue to focus on why we do what we do, then some of the other things, you know, like uh, I'm sure you from the day that, you know, when people didn't really look at billboard charts, you know, the, the, the labels we didn't did. Have billboard chart like that. We didn't, yeah. we, we didn't have it like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's so many charts out now. You don't even know which one to look at today like you be it's a media base it's it's a consumption it's, it's regular charts so like you know we can confuse the consumer by giving them uh just too much information uh that you know honestly anyone in from a hip-hop world with that big of an audience that is does a gospel record the consumption is always going to be greater and that's just yeah. right now right now until our consumer come up to that that um right place. we've got to have well, I, you know, I, the question you know I, I agree with you completely um, uh, and all the points you're making. The, the one question that I have, you know, d does is it saying anything about the creative element of the artistry, of the gospel artistry? Or, or is it just strictly saying something about, hey, it's just a bigger consumption over here. We got a lot of secular folks following in and, and making that consumption, and it has nothing to do with the creative element. I don't believe it have anything to do with the creative element because realistically, if if a gospel artist, you know, and I'm not gonna say names, drop a project tomorrow, they're gonna probably still get the same amount of con consumed numbers that they get because of you know because their base is so uh, in a box, you know, it is a, it's a gospel consumer box that still you know still some people are still trying to sell a CD at a church. I'm saying it that way, you know, I'm not saying they are, but yeah. they're trying to sell a CD to a person who don't have a CD player. So not necessarily, it's not about uh, uh, the artistry because the artistry is there. You have, you from gospel is probably one of the only genres that is broken up into a genre within itself from gospel yeah. rap to gospel praise and worship, gospel traditional, gospel choirs, gospel groups. It is definitely, uh, artistry is there. Uh, I just believe that as, as we continue to grow, um, it may be, you know, and I'm gonna say this and I don't wanna be too deep. God is showing us and reminding us of why we were supposed to do this in the first place. Because he never said, present the gospel so you can go to the Grammys. He never said, present the gospel so you can get on the consumed chart. If you present the gospel, he said, you know, you know, he would. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. We missed a little bit. Uh -oh. oh, was that a phone call came in? That's what it said. Yeah. At any rate, I stopped it. Oh, yeah, you got to get that photo. But um, I do think it is important, though, that we we show numbers only because it, it talks about how many people we're reaching. But I, I think you're right. We have to go way past what we've done and even what we did at Gospel Centric. For example, I, I would love to see a faith-based artist so big that they were invited to the Met Gala mm -hmm. and that they had that much influence in a good way. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. People say, 
we, you know, we have to deal with that. But uh, now that we're talking about the Met Gala for a second, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna talk about something that's very interesting. Oh, go, hold that, hold that, because I just want to just inject one point. Okay. And that is, um, you know, what everything we're saying, but we have to recognize that if, as a genre, if if the volume falls between a certain level, it, you know, that volume, that that genre loses its, its credibility. It gets right. lumped in with other stuff. So there is some things that we need to do, as you said, to guard it, but there is some things oh, that Brent have Jones. to do yeah. so that the genre yeah. remains viable a, a, as a genre. Right. And, and so we're keeping it that way by lumping all the things you said together. Rap, and we love all this stuff, keeping it viable in a sense, but at some point we really have to address this issue so that it doesn't fall off the genres you know, as a viable show. Well, now we get the votes. I, but, I totally agree. And Jones totally agree. is on, yeah. and he said he loved Met Gala, too. And uh -oh. I, I, would, I, I did. I was sitting there dreaming, thinking, wouldn't it be great that if we we, we had a, um, an artist that was so strong and popular that was influencing in a wonderful way fashion and so many other things. Uh, but there was something there that high earnest view that was very interesting to me. So I guess I'm getting messy <laughs> early. And this is from a fashion standpoint. Mm -hmm. Darling, what do you think about, I mean, there were a lot of men wearing skirts and stuff. And I'm wondering if fashion's going to go like to Scotland and, and we're going to, what do you think about all this stuff that you saw at the Met Gala? <laughs> well, you know, it, it was a lot of new things at the Met Gala, uh, especially in the fashion. But, I, you know, I, I believe that, you know, fashion is fashion. And sometimes, honestly, we get it late. I've traveled quite extensively around the country. And if it's the new wave, is, if it's popular, it's going to eventually hit the U.S. eventually. Um, I, I want to go back to something you said, though. You said if we had an artist. That's the scary part about gospel is that yeah. because we're always looking for an or one. Versus, versus building a <laughs> building a genre, yeah. We, I mean, yeah. I'm just, I'm just going by what you said. Is that, you is that we always right. are, are looking for that at least one versus building the genre as a whole that there's multiple, no, um, that. Right. that there's multiple. But, but I think the fashion was was definitely uh, over the top, uh, but <laughs> not just for the, not just for the men in skirts, but the, the women came came, came well, through too. Women with nothing on. Huh? <laughs> they had on nothing, and the men had on skirts. But um, it, 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 it was. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wore a horse head. <laughs> you call oh, Brent Jones. Brent Jones, do not do that. I'm not responding Brent to that. Nope, 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 nope. Brent Jones said you can see the same thing at the GMWA. These are facts. These are facts. I'm on mute. <laughs> You know that, like, yeah. so back in the day, we used to all wear big old suits just because you're supposed to. But yeah. you know, by the time we started wearing the fitted suits, it had been in Europe and Africa and everywhere for yeah. years, and we act like it's new. It's not new. It was right, men right. doing it already. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, so think, that, yeah, I love it when I see our men, especially black men, swag out because there's yeah. so much creativity, and you have, for me, been one of those people who, in the genre, have always come with a level of fashion. I appreciate that. Well, I, appreciate I'm that. old school, so I you old school. <laughs> <laughs> you see me shop though. Old, like, old school shop. I see you. I'm old school, so but you know, I, 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 I'm not coming against anybody's fashion. Daddy, because you, but you, Daddy, don't let them. 
Because he'll go there if he feels like he's sauce, like he's swagged out. He'll yeah. be like, oh, they're not ready for this. <laughs> but I'm going to get, but Sean, this is one of those days where I'm going to get even a little messier. Okay. Oh, <laughs> hold on. Let me get some attention. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know. Let's go. Hold on tight, brother. <laughs> I saw on your Instagram on yesterday. Oh. Looking forward to joining Carfitable. You said, <laughs> I'm going to find out if my demo cassette ended up in the garbage <laughs> back in 2007. And then 07, we need answers. Okay. We need answers. So we, we're going to talk about this today. <laughs> <laughs> now, really, um, I've always had great respect for you yeah. as an artist. And we're getting ready to write a book and actually do a documentary. Um, a lot of things were happening with us behind the scenes that people are unaware of. And I remember 2007 being a particular, a particularly hard year. And what others in the business, um, some of them in the record business, were telling people if they even talked to us, um, we were kind of being boycotted. It was hard for us to get funding. So a lot of times when we were able to when, when, when we weren't able to sign or even deal with an artist was because we were going through many other struggles that maybe some other people don't have to go through. Number That's one true. of people trying to put us out of business, um, lawsuits, uh, uh, we've had a couple of murders, a lot of things going on that, um, May, that we had to think about and these are the kind of things we like to share with other people in business and being black in business and yeah. people not wanting us to be there. I'm not talking about the artist. Well, so it became difficult sometimes for us to even think about signing. So that's true. I knew you were there. Though, right? 2007. I, I, knew you, I knew you were there though. Yeah, And the year may be off, but I, I remember you and I had a talk and actually you taught me a lot as I go on. You actually, we sat on the talk and you said, you know, Vashon, I would love to do some work with you. One day it may happen. But right now, my, my roster is male heavy. And that was probably one of the most honest conversations I had back then, looking for a label. You know, it was one of the most honest conversations because he was just straightforward. This is what we got going on. And, hey, you know, it's someone out there for you. But as I grew and, I, you know, now I own masters and I got artists signed to me and I got publishing and all that, I understand what it means to be, you know, overwhelmed with what you have already, especially when most of them are doing the same thing. So, you know, it was it was just I was put it on that to be a joke, but I uh, know, that was funny. <laughs> but honey, I did cry when the no. greater came out, and I didn't have a piece man. of that. I, I was like, oh man, you know, and that and that and that does happen quite a bit. Yeah. But um, I want you to tell us a little bit more about your beginnings and. Um, you know, some of the, I know you've been a great producer, some of the first projects from um, Anthony Brown and Tasha Cobbs. You yeah. worked on some of the, uh, you wrote, I think the first song you, big songs you wrote was for Bishop um, Paul S. Morton. Um, how did you go from where you are, where you, as a child, to where you are today? What, what, what was going on? Well, I grew up in the church, and uh, I say it this way. Everything I did, I did in church. So the good, the bad, the everything, you know, I did in church. And um, I, as all, God was always calling me and pulling me back to it, even when I tried to go another way. So music was what was keeping me in church. You know, I wouldn't tell nobody anything else. It wasn't preaching back then. It's just I had a love for music. So I couldn't play nothing, but I wanted to be around musicians. I couldn't sing as well, but I wanted to be around the singers. And that's what kept me going to church and being around church until I actually finally met God for myself. So, you know, oh, yeah, over the years, um, I was the minister of music of Sweet Holy Spirit with Bishop Trotter. And that, you know, yes. back in the day. And um, he actually allowed me to practice on his church on a weekly basis. So I would write songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll practice. I mean, I was writing songs and teaching them. And he let me, he let me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Please tell him we said hello, and, and you probably will see him before I do or talk to him. Yeah, I'll but, do that. Um, yeah, you know, I have this commentary I wrote that um, I'd just like to read it for a minute that I found very important. I said, we are finding, Claude and I are finding a common thread in gospel music that has been very seldom talked about, and that is childhood. 
artists and their childhood, especially, especially of the male gospel singer and how he was raised, or dare I say, not raised. The life that a lot of faith-based artists lead is very much like the rappers uh, the, 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 and the urban singers, very much a lot of the same things. But I think that what has been portrayed uh, to the public, is, I don't think we've done it purposely, but it's this, I'm perfect, my life was perfect, I had a mom and dad, and, you know, I was a church boy, and everything uh, was great. What, um, what, how what? do you think about that in the life you had? Because people's lives in the church have not been like that. Yeah, I don't, th I don't think that's what was portrayed. I think that was what, what was assumed. We grew up in an assumption days. Right. Yes. So so basically, we, we didn't have social media like it is now uh, to where people can follow you every day. You heard someone's song, you liked it, and you purchased it, or you went to their concert. You never really, you sometimes you didn't even see the person, but you heard the song, it touched your heart, and you followed them for years. It's mm -hmm. only the last maybe 10 years or so where now you have to be a whole story. So only the last 10 years or so, people are actually telling their truth because they didn't have to before. You know, it, basically, <laughs> that's what it is. It's not really uh, people are hiding it because we're all people. We're not genre-based people. We, we were born just like anyone else. Somebody be a hip-hop or anywhere else. You're born with whatever issues or concerns that you grew up having, no matter what, mm -hmm. if you're singing the gospel or not. So right. um, me personally, you know, my mom was a teenage parent. My grandparents raised me. Yeah, so it was a different thing. But like I said before, music always called me to church, no matter what. And, um, you know, when Trotter, like I said, Trotter helped me, you know, by letting me practice on his choir. And from there, I produced my first choir record that did pretty well, Trouble Don't Last Always, and My Worship is For Real, and all those songs that are still being played today. And, um, you know, just over the years, um, I, I thank God that when it was my turn to do it, I actually met with my pastor, and he agreed with me. So I didn't just go sign a record deal and move on. I signed it with permission. And I think, mm -hmm. yeah, I think a lot of my mm -hmm. grace over the years, not because I'm such a great singer, people can sing rings around me, not because I'm such a great writer, people can write all over me, but it's because I have a, 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 a second man's anointing where I don't mind submitting to someone or I don't mind working someone else's vision okay. until mine come to pass. So, and, and that's right. been opening doors forever. Um, and and I, I want to do the same thing. Like, you know, God allowed me to produce Tasha Cobb's first two projects. And, you know, she not only my, my, my friend, my sister, but she's just an amazing artist, vocalist, and worshiper. And then, you yeah. know, Anthony Brown, a friend of mine, I didn't write nothing on his project, but I knew he had something that the world needed to hear. So I just called Brian Scott, was like, hey, you Sorry, sign him that. today. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sign yeah. him today. And, and, and I decided to put my money where my mouth was because I believed in it. Uh, and I think that's what we have to do as a genre to start continuing to right. build it by pouring it to others, but then also come together uh, to 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 build policy, you know, to build to build yeah. some type of, of direction for for where we're going and something that we can leave a roadmap for years after we're gone as well. That's, yeah. right. that's so I, that's so key. Can I speak to something mm. because it sounds like um, Donald Lawrence? I've seen him do that with you guys yeah. in the scripture you would see Moses teach you know Joshua and then Joshua didn't continue it and later but what I'm seeing is that you're the Joshua and you're continuing it in the next generation <clears throat> so that it can continue to go forth which I think is awesome because Donald has given so much Donald Lawrence. As a and you know that was my first our first artist that got some singing. I remember Yes, yes, yes. He, yeah. he was the first, but yeah, I, I believe you are. And um, so tell us too. I mean, education, uh, seems to be. Tell us about your road in education and and what's going on with that. Yeah. So when I was in college, I messed up and I used my um uh loans to buy cars and stuff, and I didn't graduate back in the day. But uh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. That's not what <laughs> You use your most my cars. Yeah, I had to drive. I had to drive. Oh, even when I got, even when I fell out of school, I, I had to drive. But uh, but I didn't know what I wanted to do anyway. I was just going. That's a moment, though. That's real. Yes. You know, 
Well, you know, you were blessed to get a get a college loan. Or, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, God, God tell bless. Us, tell us how you got out of that one. Well, you know what? I um I was going to college, and then for about two and a half years, and I realized I didn't want to do that. Mm. I was going. I was going for. I, I, mean, I was going for liberal arts or something. I don't even know. And I realized I didn't want to do that. What school were you going to? Columbia College, Chicago. Okay. Um, which, which, yeah, it was a great school, but it was just not what I wanted to do. So the more I was going, the more I realized I didn't want to do it. So I kept getting pulled to being uh, minister of music on accident. Honestly, I was on an escalator at GMWA. The yeah. minister of music got fired, and Bishop tried to say, "Can you run my department?" I'm 19. I didn't want to go back to school anyway. I said, yep. And and like literally, <laughs> okay. I learned everything on the job. Uh, but I but I learned my passion. By well, doing. did you play piano? Did you play instruments? Did you see, how did Bishop mm. Carter know about you? What? Well, you know what? At this time, um, things were being changed. So uh, the traditional musician was being either misplaced, displaced, or out of place because now it go from one service rehearsal to several services, several praise teams, several locations at the time. And mm -hmm. no one taught the minister of music how to do anything but play and sing. Mm -hmm. So basically I brought administration skills and leadership oh, and okay. pastoring of people to the job that was necessary, which was more important, not more important, which was needed for the, the where the church was going at the time. So I'm mm -hmm. grateful for that opportunity because it helped me to realize what I wanted to do. So, I decided to go back to school uh, within the last few years for music business. I started and I stopped and started and I stopped. But in two months, I graduated with my music business degree. Thank you, yeah, thank God. All I'm right, so excited. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah, with a focus on marketing, uh, but definitely also some business law and things of that sort. Because I, yeah. I realized That's that you know, over the years, I own masters now. I assign artists to me. I, do deals, you know, partnership deals. I'm not signed to a label. I have a partnership with this label and this label got a partnership with this one. And to understand that a lawyer can only tell you so much. And I remember years ago, I signed something after the lawyer told me part of it and it was not good. So once I got out of that, I realized that no matter about, I may not know everything, but I want to know enough to know what I'm signing moving forward and how to manage this new new music uh, industry that is becoming. It's new. It's yeah. new. Like Claude and I, as a label, did bad deals with distributors and stuff. And some of it is, you know, I wanted to get mad at the big company I was with and go off and go through things. And then I said, no, I did this. I'm responsible for this. And I'm just going to get through it and get it stronger in the future. So I think a lot of times people get mad at themselves because the the deals especially that they start with aren't good but the truth of the matter is you're learning so it's good sometimes in the beginning to do a shorter deal as you can and just kind of learn what it is and make sure you know you don't have to stay there forever but like yeah. I said, the first two deals claude and i did <sighs> but guess what it was the best we could do at the time right. to to be a label and to get started <laughs> You know, I told this, a, I told a young artist, I told a young artist one day, I told him, he was like, oh, my deal is this, my deal is that. I said, you signed it, right? But yeah, but it wasn't right. They took my publisher. They didn't take nothing. You gave it to them. And it's like, right. but but I did. I said, you went to a family attorney, not an entertainment attorney. So I, I not, not that I was on the record label side, but I was telling him that right. you have to learn from this because you can't redo it. You just right. got to do it better next time. That's you know? right. And the thing yeah. is, a lot of times you can demand a lot of stuff in the beginning but you're not going to get it. And unless, um, in many cases, you're not going to get it in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I know anytime um, someone deals with me, for the most part, our company, you're going to have to share in publishing, you know, because of the work and the money that we put in, which was way more than a lot of other labels did. We feel, but you're right. I mean, people have to realize you have a choice. You can nobody's twisting your arm. Everybody's mm -hmm trying to do what they think is best for them. And like I said, our first deals with Gospel Centric, thank God we sold as many records as we did because 
they were not great deals. Wow. But people weren't doing labels back then. And the fact that we got to be um, a part of a bigger situation and all that was a big deal. And so we got, got through that and got ourselves in a situation where the next deal we could really command it. But our first stuff was... Yeah. And I and I find this again, I remember like sometimes I remember Coca Cola or somebody wanted to work with us on some publishing and they said they only did work for hire. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want to do work for hire. Mm -hmm. So they just paid you a certain amount and that was it. But we ended up doing it because it was Coca Cola. Wow. One time situation. And I also talk about um Beyonce. People were telling us with her we, we did two projects with um our our publishing on it you know, from the writers that we had. And people told us, don't do it. Because she got money. She should be... But they didn't get on her songs. And we did. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the biggest checks we'd ever gotten. Mm -hmm. even well, I mean, in terms of the deal. In you, terms of the deal. Yeah, don't do that deal. Cause yeah. I that uh, but, yeah, you know, it all depends. You know, you got to really... You gotta work. Yeah. Some of it's business savvy. Some things you can get. Some things you can't get. You got... But experience... And knowing, you got to know what you're giving up. Right. A lot of times you can give up something and not know, know that what you're and that's up, right. what hurts. But when you know what you're giving up and you make that that's assessment, the then that you know, then you deal with that. Uh, yeah. the, the problem is that some of us are not are ignorant of what of the, of the business and what's going on, and we don't know what we're giving up. You know, that's and, a good point. That, that, that's, that's, that's the, the problem. People don't really know what they're giving up, and then they get shocked. Really. And, and some of us, and some of us are so anxious to get a deal, honestly. When it's time to get it, we sign whatever. And then right. afterwards, we learn from it and we try to do better. So, and that's, that's the most of the artist story is that they, they're so hungry for it at the time that it happens and labels know it. Yeah. Presented with a deal with all these uh, clauses in it and amendments in it and all that, there's no way, even if an attorney goes through it, they can, they can catch everything sometimes, you know, unless you know better as an artist as well. So, uh, I, I think, you know, not knowing that you signed something is one thing. Yeah, but, that's bad. But not reading and trying to understand that you signed something is another. That's, 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 that's where it gets a little is, People right. don't realize that you can say, I don't understand what you're saying. Is it saying this? Write it like that for me. You can make the attorney, so if you're saying, I'm going to do this and that, you can tell them to write it in plain English so you can understand. It doesn't, in those places where you need clarity, you can get it and you can make them write it like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, this is why we talk yeah. about those things. And I want you to call us some more, too, so we can talk about some things because we do, we, we're trying to mentor and help more people. So we, mm -hmm. our legacy isn't anything if people don't do better than we were doing. Wow, good. Done deal. You know, and there's some things that are coming up. But I want to talk about something fun. Mm -hmm. How do you love South Africa, honey? You did your last project there. Let's talk about S.A. Where, where is South Africa? Well, he'll, he'll tell you. Where did you do your recording and everything? It's, it's um, I, well, I recorded Joe Berg at the Mosaic okay. Theater. Um, and it was probably one of the best times ever. Um just from beginning to end. It's one of the most unprepared recordings I've ever done. Really? Um, the first day, the lights went out. The second day, it was a rainstorm. But it was one of the best experience ever because we just depended on God, and he did exactly what he said he was going to do. It was The place was packed. We had to turn away thousands of people. But um, I call it a secret place because whenever I go to South Africa, it's like my secret place. Like, I, I have no worries. I just listen uh. to God. Um, I've learned so much from the different artists there, uh, from different pastors, uh, about the culture and what, what really went on. And just, you know, I have friends in South Africa, like yeah. friends that I call family. Um, yeah. and, and it's so much different because once you go, you realize it's no different from where we are. Like, all, everything that I saw on TV, I was so mad because that's not Africa. That's not, and I've been all over, but that's Africa. not Africa. They just want to show us. Yeah, they don't want to show us animals and all that, but that's not Africa. Africa is is somewhat ahead of us sometimes, you know, in certain areas. But it's it's, it's my second home. You see, I smile when I think of it. I haven't been there in a couple of years, dog on COVID. But um, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go back, you know, just just to visit though. I don't have to sing to go. I can go from Cape Town, Bloemfontein, anywhere. You know, Durban is like beautiful. Joburg is always home. So 
it's just a place that I love. That's Cape Town. Yeah. That's Cape Town. It's, but I, well, Cape Town, there's a beautiful hotel there. I can't remember the name of it right now, but um, Oprah Winfrey went there, and then oh, Nelson it's, it's Mandela. It's in Cape Town. It's, it's, it's right where? outside. Uh, is it Joburg? Yeah, outside. Uh, Joburg, then, okay. Santa. It's called Santa. Santa. The Santon Hotel. The, it's it, called the Hotel in Saxon, but it was in Stanton. In Stanton. In Stanton. So okay. every, most of the nice hotels are there, right, in Stanton? Or, yeah, but or, this like, one or, was where Mandela wrote his memoirs. It, uh, was, it was rated the number one small hotel in the world. I don't know if it uh, still is now. probably isn't. But it's beautiful. That hotel. They all, oh it's a God. lot of them, though. A lot of them are, especially in Stanton, a lot of them are beautiful, five-star or more. <laughs> Um, yeah. And overlooking most Absolutely. of most of uh, Santon area as well. So. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's a gorgeous place. Like I can't wait. When to we go, it. we would go to the Michelangelo in Joburg. That's where we stay. Ah, yeah. And then, but we always would do like two or three days at the Saxon. Oh. Uh, <laughs> when we go to Michelangelo, hang out, da da da. Go and to I'll probably stay. I stay right around the corner from you at the Da Vinci. <laughs> I bet the Da Vinci because it's more contemporary, right? <laughs> okay, so okay. Well, because we've been going so long, we've been almost eight times. I can't remember. It's been a lot. And um, but did you go on safari? I did. I did a safari, and I and I touched the lion one time only. We we'll never, we we'll never do it again. One time only. We went to the well. It was the baby lion, of course. The baby lion. I was oh, okay. never go. The big lions. I was never gonna go back because it was bigger than the car. But the the baby lions, but the baby lions still scare me. So I I I'm still from I'm still a city boy. So I could do a possum or something, but not no little lion. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I'm it's with you on that. We don't need to do that. Yeah, That's yeah, we don't need to. Play with I, didn't there. I was you know schooled in that area, so I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, I I love it there. But I want to talk a little bit about your future and your whole acting career thing. Now I looked up. And it was quite an intriguing story, and you maybe can even tell us a little bit more about your cousin Nelson Ellis. Was it? Yes. Is that the name? And um, tell us a little bit about the story. I was really trying to understand what happened, and I and I was like, "Wow, we really lost one there." Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it is, it, yeah. Tell us about that story and how you want to kind of take over in his shoes and uh get Ooh. involved in act well his shoes are too great for me to take over i can never do it oh. um, but he was one of my biggest pushers and supporters in pursuing the acting part of what i do um because i when i honestly my first uh scholarship was in acting not music uh at columbia so you know i've been acting since i was in high school and you know won <laughs> state championships and all that but i just gave it up uh for music and my cousin was like well, you need to do it you need to do it. we're gonna do something together and um uh, you know, I miss him so much. We lost him in 2017 um, mm -hmm. due to some uh, unforeseen circumstances dealing with uh, alcoholism and withdrawal. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, he's, he's with trying me. To what happened? I, it, that, that, that's what I was trying to understand. Uh, well, mm -hmm. he, he was coming out of rehab and then basically, oh. yeah, so the withdrawal is what happened. Um, and it's, it, it's, it's out there in the public, so I don't mind saying it, but it's very touching to me yeah, was because he was like my, my best friend, my homie, my biggest yeah. supporter. Um, I remember when uh, I won the Stella Awards and, um, no, I was going to the Stella Awards and he called and said, what you went to the Stella Awards? I said, I don't know. He said, come to New York. And first time I ever went to Tom Ford back in the back suite where they just measured you. And I was like, oh, this is how y'all live. Um, yeah. but it, oh, okay. Like, yeah, yeah. So he's been like that for me, that my rock. So some of what I'm doing now in the acting part of it, and I got a couple of TV pilots that I'm working on as well as some things that he and I talked about um, that I probably would not have done um, being in a depressed state, losing him after after 2017. But I decided, you know, since when COVID hit, I was like, you know, what, Sean, you got to pick up some of the things that you left dormant and move forward in it. You know, so that that's, you know, I got a, one movie I just did recently and um i'm working on a tv pitch a pilot so <laughs> pray for that uh but uh yes. basically just yes. stepping out there a little bit again that's all I, and you yeah, know i'm that's being true. messy again because i always ask single people what's on the horizon and <laughs> um how, how you navigate all that as a single man out there doing everything 
Well, my Bible says, and my Bible says in Thessalonians that you study to be quiet and tend to your own business and work with your that's own right. hands. Because that's, 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 right. that's what my Bible told me to mind my own business. That's Somebody what else told us the same yeah. thing. Same man. Hand oh, hand. oh, not those. Oh my God! Hey. Um, absolutely, the great. Um, like parents to mind their own business because it's their it's their new like thing to all ask parents. everybody. All parents. But you know, but but the thing is, the thing yeah, is that know, I, we think about legacy. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. And well, that it seems be. like it's so difficult out there right now. You know, um, it's just yeah, it's just really difficult for people out there. To see, somebody said, "Oh, M G, Vicky man." <laughs> somebody said, "Somebody said one time." I was like the crazy auntie. You never know what's going to Never know what she going to say. I, already, I, already, I was ready for it. I was like, I know it's coming. I just didn't know when. <laughs> you gotta just so I said, they're trying to get you married off to the economy. You're trying to get our child Thank married. you. Somebody. Well, that's, that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's literally <laughs> all these single people. Just, it's, it's unfortunate. It's coming back to you. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell me, when is it going to happen? We're my grandkids, and you guys, my brothers in Christ and in the industry, are feeling the brunt of it, and I apologize. Yeah. Hey, man. We're going to keep you lifted in prayer. That's all I need. Yeah, I just need you in your prayer closet. <laughs> you know what? I, I got to say this, though. Mm -hmm. You're a young black man doing well, intelligent, I mean, really pushed yourself we as black people can't help but want to see healthy relationships and legacies continue in our community mm -hmm. and i mean i think that's why we're really coming from there i mean and i see i, I really do think that there's a, a, a lot of things that you're going to be doing in the genre, um, just from the, uh, the talk that we had, I said, wow, I can see things happening. And so we, as being older, we want to see people healthy and happy and things continuing. And it's just, you know, when you look at social networking and stuff, things just don't seem as healthy as, as, as we would love them to be, you know? Well, see, for me personally, to be honest, is that I try to be as hip as others, but I'm kind of a little bit old school. And that means that I don't live my life on social media. So it doesn't, you wouldn't yeah. know if it's happening or hip or not. You know, I, yeah. I you know, it's, it's, it's just, the, it's, it's there. It's, it's, it, it's a platform for there, but I, I, I look at it like this. We did with the election, right? But do anybody remember when who you voted for was a secret? Yeah. Who you voted for was, was your, your pride. And now it's, it, it becomes a issue because now I don't like so and so, I'm gonna unfollow her because she voted for somebody else when we right. never had to deal with that before. So some uh, things, you know, as we as we're maturing and as I mature, is that so I think Edwin Hawkins told a long time ago is that you live your private life private and your public life public. So mm -hmm. I don't think people will that's see everything uh, from me, no matter what it is, because that's just how I am. That's uh, I'm not mad at you, but I'm not gonna stop asking. <laughs> well, text me and ask. You don't ask me on, on Instagram. <laughs> Text me. <laughs> no, but, yeah, you know, yeah, we just do, um, you know, we see these things. And um, like I said, when I was, there's a lot of stuff out there. And when I look at how people are raised and, and, and born and coming in to the church, do you think, and, and what you were talking about with uh, the not knowing who you were voting for before and all of that, do you feel that are we are we losing it right now or you know what do you what do you think is happening? I, I think we, yeah. we for the first time in a long time in my generation have had to come outside of the box of church. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. we've done we've dealt with within a certain way. But when you mm -hmm. have to deal with 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 a pandemic and different things that we separated church and state during my lifetime. When you have to deal with real life and reality, it's hard to do that on one accord when everything is already divided. Yeah, so, I mean, even in church, who you vote yeah. for, you might not be able to go to the church, you know? Yeah. I, well, I, I, just, I just think it's just opened up a whole can, you know, although now everything is so public knowledge. 
But I think it just opened up a can that now we have to deal with life and not just deal with church. And, you know, and, and, and don't get me wrong, those of you all who are watching, is that I love God and I, I follow his word. But that also thing is that we have to understand that we live a life. And for so long, we lived it within this box until we had to come out. And now that we're coming out, we have to deal with how do you come out? How do you handle coming out the box? And then how do we do this together now that we're out the box at the same time? And I think that's the big thing. How do we deal with politics? How do we deal with pandemics? How do we deal with building each other? How do we deal with building communities? Because we haven't had to in my lifetime. Because I noticed in my lifetime, the church moved from the neighborhood to build a building outside of it. So basically, right. in, in my lifetime, you know, basically, most churches are big or massive where we go there and that's who we believe in, that's what we do. And we have had to deal with pandemics and had to deal with, you know, some type of policy. We actually took most of the politics out the pulpit, you know. So basically, we become, now that we have to deal with life again, we have to bring our religion to our life versus yeah. always bringing our life to our religion. And it's kinda, you know, it kind of has to go hand in hand. But not everybody wants to do that. People are trying to go back to the, they want to go back to the way it was. Yeah. So, oh, it's never going to go back. It's, we're here now. We, we out, we're out here now. <laughs> the horse is out of the barn. You know, uh, you're right. There's certain things that are they're, they're private, and in fact, that that's the that, that's the core of some of the some of the controversy now uh, when people are talking about uh, should I wear a mask, uh, for example. So, well, that's my thing. I don't need to, or should I get vaccinated and, and things like that because of the pandemic, bringing out these divisions and differences. But you know, some of them. You know, yes, yeah, some of these are private matters, but but some of these private matters impact publicly. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I may be able to be spreading disease and, and stuff like that. So, so we we got to really find out the difference between you know my, you know what's private and and what's what has public impact. Yeah, so, for example, so I'm thinking that vaccination is one. Yeah. that people but back, back to but even like you know even churches whether you go back or not so people uh are you know big big discussion about in-person uh services right? but i think we're doing that now but you know we saw one 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 minister say if you wear a mask he's gonna kick you out of his church and i said now we still lost the concept here what the gospel's all about yeah i, I think <laughs> i think i think we're in a, i'm sorry i'll wait no, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I think we, we're in a day to where uh, we question who is our leader. Yeah. We know we love God and we know God leads us all. But like the generation before me, my grandmother and my mother and they had a Martin Luther King Jr. or, or, yeah. or someone who, who when it, when it galvanized people, we all thought the same. Mm -hmm. But now I don't think we have that. So now I don't want to wear a mask or well, you do wear a mask. I want to get vaccinated. Well, you do get vaccinated. No one is bringing us on one accord to understand why. And I think mm -hmm. that's what our generation is kind of missing. And, and, and it may be someone there. I don't know. But I think that's what we're missing a bit okay. because there's no one bringing us together as one to handle many situations, you know. Do you you're think people, you're right, you're right. we don't all see God the same. That's the no. problem. Oh, that's good. If we all saw God the same and, and had agreement there, what we would all see as sacrifice and, and how Christ loved in his walk, it would be the same, but we can't even agree on the least of these. A lot of Christians just across the board don't see the least of these the same way Christ did. And so if my heart's thinking of that differently, then I'm going to vote and handle my life the way I see how the word of God was written out. And that's just really what we're seeing. We're not the same page on God's word. Yeah. I, I, I don't think we all have to be, uh, I don't think we're ever gonna all be on the same page. But um, yeah. we we need to have more, more on the same page right now. But not. But I think the big thing is, don't do you see this that um, people these days don't want anyone to tell them what to do? Right. They do. They see the wrong, they want the wrong people to tell them what to do. That's like we right. we rather listen we rather listen to blogs or or just someone a, a master of whatever on Instagram than reading the statistics or reading about the vaccine. You see what I'm saying? We'd rather listen to some, a conspiracy theory. So we want somebody to tell us what to do, but we, we don't want to do the work for ourselves to find out right. what to do. Right. That, that's, where, that's where it is. Yeah. Well, how do you um, navigate traveling and stuff? Because you're back out traveling and stuff. Yeah. So how are you dealing with that? 
You know what? I, I have no problem wearing a mask. I, I tell everyone I've been vaccinated, and when it come out with part two, I'm going to get that too. Um, because <laughs> at the end of the day, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in public. You know, I, I'm in the public. And not only for me, my grandmother's 88. She'll be 89 next month. When I go visit her, I want to see if I'm as safe as possible. And I still wear a mask. I still try to social distance and do what we have to do. And, and none of it is 100%. But all we know that it's better than it was not having it. So, you know, I, you know, I personally, you know, I, I've never, and I say this before, we're in the cleanest world we've ever been in. I've never got on a plane until COVID and cleaned my seat before. That's I don't know hard. what was on it before. <laughs> I, I, I don't. You know, I, I've seen so many people wash their hands. They ain't never washed their hands before in the airport washroom because we're in a cleaner America now. And, you know, some people are against it, some people are not. But I'm just in a place right now where I'm doing what I have to do to get back to whatever my new normal is. Because what, I, what I, do you I, think about these people that, that um, Hollywood stars and stuff that aren't taking baths? They ain't cleaning the kids. Oh, wow. <laughs> she went, she went, she, she went, went there. She went, what are you talking about is the cleanest? <laughs> I see Vicky went somewhere. I don't know. Well, they've got all these. <laughs> no, we've got okay. them. People just talking too much. We shouldn't know that. <laughs> As for me in my house, right. we will yeah. wash daily. But <laughs> but I, I just think people talking too much. I don't want to hear nothing about that. That's just, that's just not good. Yeah, but yeah. we weren't raised like that though. Like my grandmother raised me, and, and you was taking a bath, you know. And if you weren't clean enough, she put you back in that, you know. So yeah, that's, that's, right. that's how we came up. That's right. You you yeah. had to take a bath. My mother always said, "You smell like a puppy. Get in the tub." But, but that's you know that back to a point you made earlier in terms of people getting on the same page. And even though we're not, to me, the issue is if, if that's what we're on the same page. If we're not on the same page, nobody respects the page you're on. Mm. <laughs> so so that's where the issues are. You know, you're on that page, okay, cool. You know, yeah, uh, we but, but we don't respect that. You got to be on this page or something wrong with you, or, or I got to be on your page or there's something wrong with me. And so we need to navigate that. But that is just start, though. Oh, no, it did. But it, when, it, when it, Jesus it, broke it, the bread, when he broke the bread and passed it, it wasn't it, all the same piece. They were all different pieces and they're all different yeah. sizes. You can't break bread and it's the same evenly. Exactly. So everyone got an unequal piece and thought their bread was the best at the table. And I think that that's what we deal with on a daily basis. As long as we know it, we know how to navigate our lives, understanding that no matter what, what we come in contact with or who we come in contact with, they're going to think they have the best bread. So that's why it goes back to knowledge, understanding. Like, I don't push vaccine on nobody. I really want people to get it, but I don't push it. I push yeah. knowledge. Go find yeah, out okay. for yourself. Don't Let's listen to it. Find out for yourself. You know, that's all. But find you're out not going to them in your grandmother's house if they're vaccinated either. Oh, right? no, they're not going to my grandma's house. Uh -uh. That's right. Yeah, but but yeah. but I, I push education though because you know uh, I met a couple of guys in Chicago on the street. They were talking about, well, y'all know what they did for us in Tuskegee experiment. I was like, okay, I understand that, and I understand that. First step is acknowledging that that's what happened, but this right. is a world situation, not a specific situation. Thank you. The world is dealing with this, so you know, make better decisions and and definitely go study even more on how this came about, what's going on, what it protects you from, and all that. But I think it's best that, like, like I said before, everyone gets a piece, and it's worse today than it was before, is that now I got my piece, and I got social media to say it. So everyone is professionals on their piece. Yeah. Regardless right. of what you or not. But right. even, I think, feel like, with even with the right. Tuskegee, people are, are not even properly educated on what that. Happened? So what when they that? bring that up, they're, they're missing the point that people were not even given the vaccine for the or syphilis. The disease, right, right. Yeah, and so there's a whole there's a whole miseducation on when people are bringing things to the to the table. Yeah, right. you have to, well, yeah you're right. You have to get be knowledge. You know, um, there's there's a, a particular scripture that 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 really has impacted me a little bit because uh, in in Hebrews 11 it says, "By faith we understand." Yeah. And, and there's some things we have to we can only understand by faith 
And so we need to make sure that we understand what's going on around us. And, and I think God gives us wisdom. We need to study to show ourselves approved. You know, we need to, to, to do the things that we need to do so that we can understand what's going on. And he not only gives us wisdom, the Bible says to seek it. And we that's the part, that, that's the part we that we don't it, get, <laughs> is that when stuff happens, you should be seeking the information. You should be seeking yeah. wisdom. Is seeking the answers, seeking the solutions, whatever, and we don't get that. We don't want. We don't want to do the work for it. We just want to listen yeah. to what somebody says and run with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, but Sean, um, we we've enjoyed talking to you, and I want to know what should we look for from you in the future? Is it going to be music, TV show? You got to tell us where we can get in touch with you. You've got a great following, but for those who maybe are meeting you for the first time and want to talk to you, what's going on? Tell us. Well, everything. I do it all. So um, I am working on new music slowly but surely. Um, I'm not worried about who's on the charts. I'm just doing what God told me to do and, uh, you know, walking in my lane that I always walk in. Uh, maybe a different way, but I'm walking in it. Uh, I got one movie coming out this fall, the winter, um, entire due season. You know, well, I got a little part in it, but I got a few things going on. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Pitching a show that's amazing. I want to talk about it, but I'll talk about it with you on the phone later. Um, okay, okay. Pitch, pitching a show um, that looks very, very good, like it's going to be picked up, and uh, just continue to just build others as well. So I don't know if we talked about this, is that I, I head up Gospel Heritage Foundation, uh, the conference that Dr. Teresa Harrison used to be over. Yes, and yes. and uh, we're working on some virtual master classes. Once I get my degree in November, I'm going to start the virtual master class series to lead up to the conference that'll be in February or March or so, but it's going to be mostly virtual classes. Uh, and we're going to have some on some, some in person, but basically you'll be able to go into a space and just download the class you want to see. And that's it basically. Um, so we're working on some new types of way, new ways of educating our industry on these musical changes and on what's going on in the world. Wow, that's Beautiful. exciting. Okay. Well, you, we're going to have to keep up with you, and you keep up with us. And, I, and yep. I'm serious about there are a couple of things offline I'd like to talk to you about, um, you know, maybe getting involved in, because a lot of the thing is that there are other areas, but not many black people are involved in them. So, yeah, we talk about those things in terms of the music industry. But we have appreciated talking to you so yes. much. It's been fun. Thank you. Thank you. you. Back. Yeah. Uh, sorry we didn't get that signing done, but you never know. It, it, was, it was all God's plan. All God's plan. All, God, <laughs> all things were God. God yes. had, had yes. the way he wanted it. Mm -hmm. So you know, thank you so fast. much. I know oh, it went fast. Oh, God. And I want to just thank you, and we'll yeah. see you later. See you later. Thank you so much, and thank you. All right. God bless, thank you. Bye-bye. Peace, everybody. Bye. Bye. Well, hello. Hello, what's thank up? Thank you so much for watching Carfittable yes, Talks. Yes, thank you. Please remember to press that like button, and we need you to subscribe. And also... Leave some comments. We really need to hear from you. Thank you.